first word was dog in Hungarian. Kutya. I was staring out the window into the neighbor's yard, wishing for the dog I did not yet have, not knowing that 20 years later my dream would finally come true. Where would I be without this little brown hound? This one. This is not my dog. This is my dog. Vincent. Where would I be without this little brown hound? We're of the same land, he and I. How to tell the story of a dog when a dog doesn't have a biography? How do I account for Vincent's life without speaking for him? Perhaps the story of a dog is not the story of a dog anyway. It's quite a different story. It begins here, in the deep, in a blue-green world the water from which we all came and which we carry inside us, still. We all contain water in about the same ratio as Earth does, and salt water in the same ratio that the oceans do. But I think I am more ocean than most people. And yet, I am earthbound. I am of the grass. I am of the dirt. I am here to look with reflective attention at the wings of butterflies. To wonder. To ask. Who am I? Who are you? And how did we get here from our watery beginnings? What is it like for you to share this world with me? When God said, we shall have dominion over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. What did she mean? Am I your shepherd? Am I your keeper? Are you not my keeper? about the wild ones. I'm sure there's something it is like to be a giraffe or a rhinoceros or a deer and to be free rather than to be captive. To feel togetherness or solitude. To feel the earth to feel water, to be like a spider suspended in the air, the perfect metaphor for being, or something it is like to be a dog, to be my dog, to 
Despite this exploration, speculation about the inner lives of animals takes no part in what I feel for them. This is not an argument that animals have inner lives or a sense of self or any such argument about their cognitive, affective, and social capacities. These things are so obvious to me that they do not need argument. No amount of evidence matches my certainty that it is so. This is merely a musing, a meandering. It is a contemplation. It is a walk in the woods like the one I take with Vincent every day. It is a prayer for the other sweet souls who love dogs, who love animals, who love the lives we share. Strange as those lives may be. Vincent has an inner life, I'm sure. Dreams and desires. Just as he has an outer life. Sticks, belly rubs, fear of the smoke alarm and of thunder. He has joy. So why no biography? I am merely thinking about what it is to be a living thing, what it is to share a life with another slightly different living thing, what we do together, how we suffer and feel joy in common. To wonder what we may feel about each other and our worlds. After all, our understanding of the definitive facts of the human condition, our sexuality, our vulnerability to misfortune, our mortality, is determined through and through by our creatureliness. Like other living creatures, we die rather than break down. Ashes to ashes. Dust to dust, rather than rusting or recycling, is the manner of our ending. It is nearly impossible to examine the lives of animals without coming to a deeper understanding of our own lives. When examining my humanity, I find, deep down, my animality, my own creatureliness. These examinations and explorations have been brought to bear on my life because of a small brown hound. 